Let's get into some Cowboys free agent targets. Now, as look, the trade deadline long over. Cowboys still have some concerns, if we're being honest, for this team. Do I think they make a big time free agent addition? No, I don't think that's the route they end up going. But every competent organization has a list of players they will monitor. And there are some players who I think could help or at least provide depth in the events of injuries or just as insurance for the Cowboys. So we'll break down some top candidates for the Cowboys in free agency, beginning with Olivier Vernon, the edge, who we've discussed before. We mentioned him right when Demarcus Lawrence went down with that unfortunate foot injury a while ago. Randy Gregory, and I, I will stand by this maybe hot take, is the only reliable, currently healthy, pure pass rusher on the roster, meaning you can't count Tank Lawrence, and Micah Parsons is not playing right now as a pure pass rusher. The options there for Dallas, I don't love. Vernon was great last year. He was balling out, having an awesome season for the Browns. Nine sacks, 12 TFLs, looked like he was going to get the bag in free agency despite being older, and then, oh tears that Achilles. That happened late in the year. And my suspicion as it relates to Vernon is that he's not cleared yet. You don't find players coming off a nine sack season and 12 TFLs who are available even at a, a slightly older age in November. Those guys don't exist on the open market unless they aren't healthy. So medical, big time red flag there. But if it's cleared, I have interest. Because, I, I look, we all love the way Gregory's played. Parsons as the edge, awesome. Terrell Basham has played a lot, but, I mean, he hasn't done all that much. Put this in perspective. I'm using pro football focus's uh, pressure numbers this year. 32 from Gregory, uh, 27 from Parsons, 23 from Osa. All really good production. After that, your leaders, guys, are Terrell Basham with 13. He's at 198 opportunities. The math there, folks, is 6%. That's bad. All right? Jerron Curse is there with 8. Dorrance Armstrong hasn't done much and admittedly limited time this year. Chauncey Golston is simply not there. Though he's been, frankly, a bit better as a rusher than Basham. Azur Kamar is a special teamer. The Cowboys don't have another good option with Tank Lawrence on IR and Parsons not being a full-time edge right now to really generate pressure. Basham is your three or four, is okay. If he's your two, mm, that's not what you're aiming for there. So I got some more names coming up, but this show is not about me. It's about you, the people. So I want you to name a player who you want the Dallas Cowboys to go out and sign. This will be the pinned comments on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, head on down to the comments and get those responses in. Gambling man, I love to bet on Dallas, and I felt great this past week. I'm like, you know, I'm going to take Chargers, pick them. I'm going to take Browns, upset underdogs. It's going to cash. You know what I'll do? I'll, I'll boost my odds here by throwing in the Bills money line and the Cowboys money line. Oops, lost that bet. Now, I still got plenty of leftover money to play with on BetUS because I went to chatsports.com slash bet and I used promo code COWBOYS125. It gave me a 125% deposit bonus. 100 bucks in, boom, 125 for free. Now, we can also hook you up with a Cowboys jersey. And uh, having been yelled at by my bosses repeatedly, please follow the instructions. I have a family to feed. Don't let them fire me. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Cowboys125. Use those two things when you sign up and deposit at least a hundred bucks. A, that gets you a 125% deposit bonus. And then when you email us, Jersey at chatsports.com with your BetUS account number, screenshot of your first bet, plus like your shipping, jersey size, etc. We will hook you up with one of three available jerseys. Only these three. I haven't found any Trevon Diggs. I'm sorry. We've got Dak Prescott, Color Rush only, CeeDee Lamb, and Zeke Elliott, both with the Color Rush and in the Navy. Email us, jersey at chatsports.com with that information, or if you have questions, we got you guys covered. But remember, the two most important steps, 100 bucks down at chatsports.com slash bet when you use promo code COWBOYS125. Please do not 
forget that. All right, back to free agent options. If you are panicking about Tyron Smith in left tackle spot, the best tackle out there is Russell Okun, who was a starter last year for Carolina before he got hurt. And I am surprised, I, even more so than Cam Newton, frankly, that he remains unsigned. Now, I think he allegedly wanted too much in free agency. That was the report out there. Okun was okay last year. He got beat a little bit more than he did back in his prime self, which is okay, understandable, but I, I think he's still going to be a bit better than what you saw out of Terrence Steele. A lot of this comes down to, in the end, how you feel about Tyron Smith, because this is, this, this is a short-term solution. If you are worried about Terrence Steele or Lyle Collins or Ty Insecki at left tackle, and you're worried about Smith missing more than just, you know, one or two more games, maybe you pick up the phone and try and figure out a different option. Now, Okun, his price has to come down. You're not going to pay him starter money that stupid. But if you're worried, maybe that's the route you go. So I want honest answers with this next question. What is your concern level over Tyron Smith. Good almost every year for missing about three games or more last year. So keep that in mind when you scale this for me. 1 to 10, 1 being not worried at all, 10 being you're freaking out. All right, other free agent tackles. This grouping overall is uh, mostly right tackles. I love Mitchell Schwartz, but he's he's not healthy, and he's a right tackle. He doesn't fix your issues. Rick Wagner could maybe play on the left side. That's awesome as well. But, you know, I think you'd probably call uh, Okun first. Probably better as a right tackle. Anyway, DeMar Dotson, you know, he's not, he's not anything special. So, of those three guys, what are you doing? Are you, are you kidding me, Producer Jeff? It's a yearly right of passage. No, absolutely not. Get, no, we're not doing this. The answer's no. We're, I'm not saying anything because I don't feel like drinking today. We're, we're not doing it. Ne no, no. Next one. Get at it. All right. Gino Atkins, thank you. I'm going to fire your ass. All right. Uh, Atkins, who many of you wanted to sign in the offseason, former pro bowler for the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, the Seahawks brought him in for a visit. Cowboys team doctor medically cleared him. Seattle did not sign him. And there has been not a peep around Geno Atkins since then. I wonder if maybe the team doctors beyond just uh, didn't like what they saw on Atkins. There is a difference, by the way, from the team doctor clearing them and the doctor, the surgery saying you're to go. There's even if it's the same guy, there's a difference there. And Atkins has not been the same player, even in 2019. Now, not as good as he was back at his peak, but I am worried overall about the defensive tackle position. I like Osa. He's been great. Carlos Watkins, mm, some flashes. Quinton Bohanna, I actually don't think he's played that well. Justin Hamilton can pressure, but I don't like him as a run stopper. I would love to find a fatty, but the fatty's only campaign it did get uh, uh, canceled last year, a victim of cancel culture because it was it was it didn't work, which. You know, I think it was, it was probably fair in the end. Now, if you want more free Cowboys videos all year long, hit that big red button and subscribe. Help me feed my family. I'm like a week and a half away from having baby girl or hopefully baby girl number one, hopefully less. I don't want to miss any games. Just, you know, we'll, we'll try to do whatever we can to be live during the games. I'm, I have not yet cleared the, uh, the hospital room watch party yet with my wife. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. We'll figure out something, though. Subscribe today for free Cowboys videos all year long. Some more DT conversation now here. Kawan Short. Injuries a problem in recent years. In his prime, pro bowler caliber uh, uh, guy. Here's why, in the end, I actually say no. And I, I wanted to include him because we've mentioned him before. And this is probably unfair of me, but eh, whatever. Uh, I can be irrational sometimes. Do I want another injured former Panthers defensive tackle? You are 0 for 2. Jared McCoy, I think his career is over with the injuries. Sucks. I feel terrible for him. Dontari Poe, I don't feel bad for him because he took fatties only too seriously. Kawan Short. Six games the past two years, seven tackles, one TFL, four quarterback hits. It's been a long time since we saw great Kawan Short. At his best, could stop the run. Right now, I don't 
know if I trust him to do that. So if you had to pick one, or if you want to pick one of them, who would it be? Pick a defensive tackle for me. Type KS for Kawan Short, or type in GA for Geno Atkins. Head down to the comments and type your responses for me right now. One last DT. I know you guys love snacks. Who doesn't? But Damon Harrison, I will be blunt, quite simply. Uh, I think he's washed. I, I, I don't think he has it anymore. He bounced around last year. Seattle, Green Bay, nine tackles, never signed this year. You saw the regression from 2018 to 2019 to 2020. At his age, even a, a, as a space eater, I just don't think he has anything near what you're looking for in the end. So I love snacks, always will, but I think at this point, big name, but not the level of production that you want.